Right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the, our Academy Symposium. All right, so the, um, we are glad to have our presenter here today. I'm uh, LT uh, Bunchen from TKGS. We are here today uh, to do this. I hope we will have some good cross pollination here through this uh, program. Um, all right, so um, let's welcome our speaker. We have uh, Lukang from uh, ETV, Tak Leong from uh, River Valley High, and Jimmy from uh, Yishun, uh, JC. All right, so uh, let's put our hand together and welcome them. <laughs> okay, I'll hand over to uh, Lukang. The curriculum that we've developed, which is more tailored for the A levels. Huh? So, uh, first and foremost, we just have to open that. Okay. Okay. The sharing will be the content already been left on the Mac folder, the desktop. So, feel free to copy with your uh, thumb drives. But, okay, so uh, in accordance with the content of the given by the academy, so they give us some guidelines to steer the Sharing. So, okay, the first and foremost, we just talk about the overview. Okay, we believe that physics is inherently an uh, abstract topic. If you just go by using textbooks, uh, animation, graphics, text, uh, arrows, you know, to show these ideas, which are difficult, because these are abstractions of ideas. So, what we are proposing is we actually need a real uh, environment, and in this case, uh, we are using simulations computer model that mimics real-life physics to allow students to experience the physics that we are teaching. Now, what we did was this, we went to the internet and then we did something to do our work on some scholarly work. And we also looked at the simulations which are available on the internet. And in particular, we would like to give a special credit to this particular group of people. Uh, this is the NTNU Java uh, Virtual Lab by Professor Huang Fukun. He's a very famous Taiwan professor, if you do not already know him, do check him out at his website. Okay, he has hundreds of simulations, all free, if you have registered in his forum, which is an essentially free account. Then after that, you can download and keep it on hard disk and use it for your own teaching uh, and learning. Uh, the other one is the open source physics, OSP. Uh, this is uh, another website set up by the group of professors from USA, uh, led by Professor uh, Christian Bukeng from Davidson College. So he's a very famous guy because he's a Brown professor of physics. He's the author of Fislets, if you are familiar. Okay, Fislet is widely used by the uh, universities for teaching their undergraduates. But he has moved his work onto a new platform, which is Java based, called Easy Java Simulation. And you know, uh, Professor Peter Deng has mentioned, you can't solve today's problem by just alone. So what they did was, was a group of professors that come together. Uh, Paco is a, a mathematics professor, and the rest of them are actually physics professors. So they came together and then they developed physics content uh, using the, the tool that they are using. Uh, I'm from ETD, okay, uh, and Tan Leong is from Yung Hali. Jenny and Dao Dan is uh, from uh, so we have, at different stages of our, of our lives in our school, we by some chance we know each other, so it was easier for us to work together. But I do not see any problem working with uh, people that we do not know, who share the same passion. I mean, we just want to learn, I think, especially the, the three of us, I think we are all very co sharing. It's very evident from the way that we give away the, the curriculum and the PowerPoint. Can I just be on one the book on the book one? <laughs> Look at the stuff. Uh, yeah. Not, not the Terminator. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens after today, we hope that you can spawn in your own school, using your own effort. So, what, is, uh, what you use and what you research on belongs to you. Uh, but it would be good if you also continue to network with us, together with uh, Charles uh, from Chat Chapter. Uh, so, we hope to work together uh, in this fraternity. Okay, Java simulation is a toolkit in which all these simulations are made. Uh, NTLD, I mentioned before, OSD, and then uh, we also refer to PHET. I think a lot of the physics secondary colleagues refer to this set of simulations made by the PHET group. Okay, what I do is I do, I do look at their simulations when I design and customize to the A level syllabus. Because you have to bear in mind these professors usually are their own students. 
So you notice that the curriculum material, uh, if you're lucky, are uh, usually uh, for your yeah, university. If not, it may be for certain segments of the uh, US syllabus. Uh, in the method of encoding, I just show you a brief timeline, I'm not going to take too much time. Got interested in this open source physics movement because it allows ordinary teachers like ourselves to take control of the curriculum development, the simulation design. Okay. So I did some research then uh, because I knew Tan Yong from an earlier engagement. Well, actually, we approached each other now, it wasn't really one way. Okay. So we did a pilot and then we were quite happy with it and then we uh, submitted the lesson to ICD Connection. It's a master plan uh, initiative. So <coughs> we submitted the lesson there and then we continued to refine it and then uh, we intervened again uh, in 2010 with a different group of students and this time in the new campus. And I was fortunate enough to manage to write a journal paper on which some of the physics folks felt was good enough to be published. So it's in this thing called the Institute of Physics, uh, Physics Education Journal. Okay. So there's a snapshot of the diagram. Okay. And uh, with YJ, I was uh, fortunate enough that I did the R&D largely on my own. Uh, I did the R&D. And then, uh, and Around 2010, uh, I got YJ interested. I talked to Jamie because we met through some conference again, other platforms. Then we spoke. In, just recently, we used this uh, same, same set of tools to do. We even developed the uh, simulations. Uh. So, what I did was I told Jamie, hey, why don't you take a look at this? I think these are great tools, they are free. Most of the difficulties in scaling up because it's free, you can run on any of the three platforms that computer run on Windows, Mac. Uh, it doesn't run on a mobile platform at the moment. Okay. So I said, why not just take a look at it? And then essentially, I went to this school of the other chit chat, and then eventually, I showed him some things which got him interested, and then you know, so he started to do some research on it. La. And then again, I was to, to, to give the, the school some incentive you know, to reward the initiative to want to learn together you know, and, and make a lesson. Because the students are now learning to be like scientists, and they are doing the inquiry. So I got it inside the ICD connection. The reward system is the principal will receive a set of certificates signed by our director, uh, Dr. Chia, who principal has to give it. And then uh, hopefully, uh, it will be a celebration of uh, learning for all of us. Sorry, can I interrupt? Yes. I remember Yishun Junior College started on interactive physics at one time, am I right, Jimmy? Yeah. Was that on interactive physics? You all started on interactive physics, right? You piloted. Uh, many years ago. Because I'm not sure about that. Oh. Because the vendor told me that your school was one of the early adopters in interactive yeah. physics. When you were there? Yeah. Uh, from 2000 to 2000, I got in contact with interactive physics. The vendor's name was called Ken. Ah. Okay, Ken. So, Anyway, I was interested in interactive physics, la. so I, got, I bought some uh, yes. licenses then, and all that. Then now you stop, because I saw one of your worksheets developed on quite lengthy. Yes. Very steps of instruction I saw. Yes. So after that, what happened? Why, why stop? Now of course, I moved to ETD. <laughs> <laughs> so you are able to tell me whether the pro and con, is it? Yes, I can tell the pros and cons. The, the concern here is, we had an earlier discussion, whether uh, a free platform like Easy Java Simulation adopted by a group of physics professors is a more suitable platform to be used by school, or should you go on a vendor based uh, platform like Interactive Physics, which I think uh, many of us already know and have used it extensively in our curriculum? I think Dr. Long and Jimmy are all using all that. Uh, the quick answer would be Interactive Physics requires some amount of money. The student cannot play the, they cannot play the models. I think. I can play like a video. I think I can export it as a video. Right? But my understanding is based on the 2007 understanding of interactive physics. Like maybe it has changed. Has it changed? Okay. So that's something that we have to do. Like what uh, Charles has been advocating in his uh, many talks, blended uh, learning. So you do your face to face, you can do your real labs, and then you can actually uh, put in some of these on online platforms. And then get the student to do the so you augment the face-to-face -face as well as the online component. So I think this is a stronger case uh, that we can make. Uh, the learning is deeper, correct? 
to create a curriculum. Uh. That's why we have ASD, that's why we have uh, M1 learning, right? <laughs> because it's steep. Uh. Okay. Uh, so, River Valley, we did this. Uh, so, the good news I can tell you is that there were six, six teachers involved, 200 over students. Okay, later, there will be video that will show this. Uh, we did survey performance of the learning and then we got into discussions with the teachers, the students. Okay. Uh, for YJ, it was a less ambitious one. We did it with just Jimmy. Okay. It had 22 students, which was part of the school's initiative to highlight something with one-to-one uh, -one computing. So again, we did the same set of things. But this is the theoretical framework that we are basing to examine the practice we play. We adopted this from Dr. Chi, NIE, the Learning Sciences Group. Right. What we are saying is the students and the teachers with the kind of free worksheets okay, facilitated with very skillful teacher, okay, and then you get the students to conduct first-person experiment. Okay, then they can use this simulation as experiential environment. Okay, and then you do this essentially like a loop. Okay, and then after that we get the students to eventually perform a task of understanding. You can do the usual post test, test, and then mark on. Okay, so uh, from the Lucas presentation, you realize that for Brick Valley, we actually tried it for uh, two years, O9, which is our pilot, we have about 100 students, so I think uh, three teachers. And then uh, 2011, we have the so there is actually a difference again between these two set of uh, tests. The 2009, okay, this whole activity was actually a post lecture activity, okay, as a part of a poetry session. Whereas uh, after after this uh, whole cycle, so I asked myself, is it possible that the student can actually pick up the learning even before going through a lecture? Because when, after going through a lecture, you have uh, pick up some uh, particular skills or knowledge. So what what is it? 2010. Uh, we actually try it as a pre-lecture activity. So this is a concept that most students, I would say almost 99% uh, uh, of them will have no idea what is a conversation of the lecture. So we actually did this whole activity and uh, quite happily, okay, there, there was actually a lot of positive results as a result. So you can take a look at what is really the outcome. So uh, this is actually based on the 2010 activity. This is for sex for students, right? So this is for J1, or what we call the year 5 students and the year 5 students. So for a pre-lecture uh, activity, we will expect the students to be able to pick up elements okay, of the following. What is the sport combination of uh, momentum? Uh, what do you mean by total momentum is constant? Total change in momentum based okay, so on sport. So what happened is that uh, using the simulations, they have a very powerful task, which is actually to pick up the same or Okay, but luckily, the affordance of uh, ICT in this case is that I can actually do the condition okay, at a very, very short amount of time. In fact, the data gathering will be there about 10 or 15 uh, minutes or so. And uh, in order to so-called cut down time, uh, I actually assign them uh, different kind of uh, data to collect. Well, of course, uh, later on, there was actually uh, some uh, so-called feedback uh, that you know, they, they would rather collect all the data themselves, rather than you know, I collect one set and at the end of the day, they will come together okay, again. The table was actually structured uh, uh, in a way to bring out the points that highlighted in this time. Okay, uh, this was one of the hardest things to come up with. The, the rest are actually pretty standard. So, like, for example, why I want this to be here, or why, why must this be covered this way? Okay, that was the purpose. So, uh, after they've completed the tables, okay, they, they are actually asked to now we look at the data they have collected. And also uh, got from the other teams, they put together uh, as a one single table, look at the specific columns, what do they understand? So, uh, I think one of the, the so called success story, okay, I, I believe, uh, is that as we were going around the groups, okay, to, looking, to, to, to look at uh, their discussion, you know, listen to their discussion, we realized that the students, okay, although they did not go through the they actually could pick up points like, for example, when they collect a certain set of data, they realize hey, how come this one is actually out of the trend. Okay, it's a certain trend. That's why the table was a that way. And uh, a lot of them can actually pick up the okay. 
would be because they click something wrong, they use some values wrong, or they copy the wrong values. Then they realize that something doesn't work out. Because of that, what we can argue is that the student actually engage in a kind a kind of self-rationalization. And of course, uh, through all these uh, little mistakes and all these uh, small discussions, there's a lot of teachable moments. And uh, at the end of the day, okay, uh, from the point of the teacher, when we do a summing up, we can actually bring this uh, uh, across so that uh, the learning becomes more powerful. Uh, the next slide is uh, for Jimmy. Okay, um, for my part, um, I'm doing your interpretation. Uh, I'm someone who believes that uh, if you want to use ICT, I make sure that it adds values. Uh. So for the topic of gravitation, it's something that's very abstract. And uh, usually, we don't conduct accurate experiments in labs trying to investigate the effect of gravitation. And the effect of gravitation is only significant when masses are huge enough, things like that. Since there's no, no experiment to, to be conducted, so I, uh, I want to use simulations. For four main areas, these are the four main areas, so I have four simulations to illustrate, to address all these areas. Okay, the first thing is about field strength and potential, something that students are always confused about. Field strength is a factor, potential is a scalar. And then the negative sign, what's the meaning of negative sign? So to them, it's like something that they memorize. Uh. They can memorize definition, we could state, but they don't understand anything. So uh, in the simulations, uh, they have first. In the simulation, there's a soft plan to test mass. So they, are, they can play around this thing, they move the test mass, they can see the arrow, the arrow represents field strength. Okay, and then when you shift to the left, the arrow to the right. Right, the left. and then uh, there will be values for the GQ strength. So when it's pointing to the right, it's a positive value, but the left is a negative value. Uh, so through the questioning, the questioning uh, requires them to deduce the meaning of negative sign. Even simple things like that. Uh. Then they realize that, okay, uh, it is negative when pointing to a certain direction. Okay? And then when you go to potential, they do the similar things, and then they find that oh, potential is always negative. Thinking like they, they began to, to argue among themselves, oh, oh, why is that negative sign? What, what's the meaning behind? So, this is uh, one thing that we did. Uh, the other one is escape velocity. Uh, we went in, in a field of uh, escape velocity, uh, you uh, a very commonly asked question would be uh, how much energy do I need to launch uh, uh, something from Earth to the moon? Okay, and then, uh, so the idea is that students always think that uh, okay, just find the potential and the surface of Earth. Find the potential and the surface of both, and then we'll subtract off and find the difference in potential and energy required. Uh, through this, I let them try out uh, shifting this test mass again. The different error represents the forces by the two planets. And then, as they shift around, the length of the error changes. Okay. So, they can just stop any point and click play and see what happens to the test mass. And then, just try out a different point. And then, they realize, oh, there's a point where the two arrows actually uh, cancel each other. That's my statement. Jimmy, you have a so when it's not balanced, uh, does the simulation show, show that it's more? Possible? Yes. So when it's nearer to the earth, it's playing, it yes, you move to the earth. Yeah. Nearer to the moon, it should move to the moon. Then they are supposed to find that point. And then uh, the person continues to ask them to think about what's the meaning of this point. What's happening there? And then, uh, then person number seven asks them, okay, if I want to launch something from earth to the moon, I only need to shift it. I only need to launch that things to that point, to that point where the where the forces actually concern. And I ask them why? Why do you think? Okay. They actually try out, oh, if I just shift it to the left of that point, it actually goes to the moon on its own. Okay. Uh, next one about Joe's engineering of it. After teaching for three batches, uh, the, the, the students can come up with the three conditions for Joe's statement, but they cannot visualize it, especially for girls. Uh, they, they really cannot understand what you mean, Joe's statement. Uh, so the simulation helps them. Uh. Okay, they see the satellite, you can see the Earth, they see the satellite rotating, and then it, the, there's this point that's aligned to the satellite all the time as it rotates. Okay, uh, but what I like about the simulation is that besides showing what is Joe's statement, it's also showing what is not Joe's statement. There are a few moves, other mode number 6 in this simulation. We have to see what happens if the satellite is going like this. Okay, while the earth rotates about this green axis. Okay, obviously this is not a dual stage satellite. Um, they ask them why. Okay, why is it not? Okay. And the last one is on 
uh, campus the law. In the past, we would give them a list of uh, your rotation, radius of rotation, and then ask them to do some uh, block blocking, and then finally, they realize that all these were open the argument. They have no uh, concept about all these numbers, it doesn't mean anything to them. So the simulation allows them to, so I try to use the simulation to help them to visualize. Okay, what happens when the radius of COVID gets longer, the period actually gets longer. So they play with different planets and observe. I think the simple act of just observing the motion uh, ingrained into their, um, to their, to their, their mind. Uh. Okay, so. okay. Now, uh, to the findings here, I will go through this very, very, very quickly. We have a series of things about tank motion also. Yeah, just line up a few. And uh, you really need to go into detail again what is the numbers are. Uh. I think uh, because uh, we actually position this as a, this as a pre-lecture activity, so obviously we ask them this question, how much do you know about uh, conservation of momentum? Uh, most of them are thinking about the momentum. So uh, after the lesson, okay, at least okay, quite a, a large number of them were able to tell us at least okay, what they mean by conservation or at least okay, the idea. So that is uh, something that uh, we are actually happy about. And I have to stress that this is actually not a formal research study. The only, uh, is uh, more like uh, just to find out uh, how can we actually do better okay, in terms of uh, using the letters okay, for the lessons. I know they enjoy this kind of uh, this is kind of uh, the angle for learning, to enjoy this kind of activity. So these are actually the, the two questions that we actually come out with okay, uh, for the set of uh, technicians. And uh, the next set of slides is actually on the YJ finding. We have a slightly different approach, but the result is also I forgot to mention that uh, the four simulations were actually injected into the existing tutorial questions. I didn't want it to be something extra. So in the set of tutorial questions, we are already actually addressing different different of this concept. So I just inject inside. So the students are supposed to go home. We, we don't have a laptop. Everybody get a laptop. Okay, with the software. Go back. While they're doing tutorial, they try out the simulations. After they understand, go through the questions on their own. Okay, then they try the tutorial questions. They go on to Joe's range that like, okay, they try the simulations, they try the questions. So, so that there's seamless integration. Uh, in fact, I think uh, the students quite like it. Um, they like the visualization. Uh, uh, and uh, it meets their need. And in a sense, uh, they're self directed learning because they're learning on their own, at their own time, at their own pace. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, also, we from the we also have some of the qualitative questions, so these were some of the stuff that they actually managed to count up. Basically, uh, there were quite a number of similar findings between RV and uh, YJ. And because we are from, a, for at least uh, for our particular topics, we are actually in the JC. So, for those who have experienced JC physics, you know that it is extremely boring most of the time. <laughs> like gravitation, you can't see anything. Conservation of momentum, and uh, except for maybe having two cars colliding, or two cars colliding. Yeah, otherwise you don't see it. So basically, uh, the students was uh, pretty appreciative okay, that they were given a chance okay, to see uh, the star of okay, action. Okay, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, everything is uh, not so rosy as well. Uh, there are also other comments like, for example, the simulation doesn't look pretty uh, because it's just a box. We have time to show you the, the, the box. And uh, some of them will also prefer, like I mentioned earlier, on the way to be able to collect more data on their own rather than uh, you know, getting the data from the arguments. So this is a finding from uh, YJ. You can see that there are actually some similarity. Uh, but of course, uh, for them, they are actually also looking at uh, visualization uh, for presentation. And of course, uh, they are also looking at self directed learning, which is uh, not what we're looking at today for the data. We would like to engage the participant in conversation. So one way we thought it to spark up a conversation is can you just go to the if you're on the internet you can go to these various links. Okay. Later on I'll show you a video, you can go to all these links. Or actually the, the, the simulations are all inside here. Okay. I think some of you are already open.
So maybe you can take one minute to explore it, and then uh, as we go around, you can ask uh, some of us who are walking around. I think some of you are curious today. What? How long does it take to develop this uh, particular uh, applet? It really depends. Because uh, from a uh, NTNU website, you can actually download the source code. So if there is already an existing one, you will just need to do modification. I think the beauty about Easy Java simulation is that you can actually design the applet to your needs. If you have a particular way of presenting it, you can actually design it. Okay, but first, uh, if you want to redesign the client, yeah. Okay, so in addition, so he, he may have experienced it, he may have seen it, so does he know? So the way we figured that the student can learn better is now the student can now key the values here. Okay, so for example, if you touch me for a while, uh, after this whole line, if this is perfectly elastic, uh, this number here should be something. Okay, so let's say the student is guessing 3. Okay, there is actually a feedback followed by a color. So it's red, you say that it's wrong, and the number is negative 3. So it's out by negative 3. So he has to hit one. So once he gets the correct answer, we give affirmation of his effort. So we say yes, no CON, and uh, this is the formula that, for, that makes them understand the symbols. Oh, sorry, I'm just thinking if I'm a vicious student, I'm looking a lot at the uh, simulation, right? Then it doesn't, it doesn't go with my, my mental model of if the green card is going to bang onto the yellow card, the yellow card should go out of the bench. I know you have a limitation of a space. Can you make the yellow card, the moment it leaves at the edge of the yellow bench, right? I mean the blue bench, right? can you make it fly in the air out of the screen rather than stopping there? Otherwise, I mean, if I'm not a bright student, I would say, okay, after the elastic condition, the end result is somebody will stop. Then I will walk away with the kind of misconception. But I think that is the limitation of simulation. That's the reason why not all that, That's the reason why, uh, okay, then maybe you have to have a disclaimer uh, before the beginning of your play. Because I will walk away with this if you don't tell me. If I'm a learner. Because my knowledge comes from playing with this and what you're telling me. So one, uh, one, one point to bring in is if you're afraid of this conception that can be introduced by simulation, which is perfectly valid, one approach that we should look at is the, uh, the call for blended learning, which is what Charles is uh, advocating also. I think it's perfectly sound because you get the student to do the actual setup, which we did in Real Valley. The student actually saw something difficult. But after that, it shows some demo and all that. And then the student can see, okay, if this cut <coughs> drop off, it really was all up. But it's not in the simulation, you know, you can figure it out why it's like that. Okay. So uh, to tie in later on, the student will do one to one of and then they do this experiment through the simulation. So they can see the bridge between the real setup and the simulation. So hopefully that can sort of address some of the misconceptions that the student may have after playing with the simulation alone without actually real life experience. Yeah. So I thought simulation sometimes when the kids are not very clear, to them is something that's very ideal, they walk away with the ideal case. So the question has been it inserted in your humor in such a way that you can understand good compare contrast of what is a reality, what is the model telling them, so how do they find the difference in the reality and explain the difference in what we are seeing on the model and their reality. That could be some kind of uh, more reflective learning. I was thinking that that could be an essential question. So at the end of the whole thing, why do it's a kind of question? Yeah. What, 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 why do you think it happened this way in the explanation? And I think to address Yuri's point, uh, I, of course it's good always to go for concrete, the real one, to the simulation. But it's still okay in the sense that you have a slightly longer RAM, but I say, I say t equals 0, okay, the collision, put in the t equals 0. Then up to a certain point, you can say t equals to say t1. And say, and say uh, 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 this size is only a, a snapshot at t equals t1. And there's actually dot dot dot, there's Still uh, moving on. I think that will have to. Uh, so as you say, it's a the photographic shot. Then it freeze the frame. Right? So, so, so you can actually get a student to play with it. They can explore, and then they can figure out. They can become like scientists. Essentially, they can come up with their own hypothesis. They say that they can be they are good enough or so good. Could be Nobel laureate uh, winners 
they can right click on it, look at the source code, the way it was built, and then change it, and then come up with a better measurement, uh, better physics model. I'm perfectly agreeable to allowing our students to be Nobel Prize winners. Okay. Can you okay. just say, demonstrate, right click and see the software. Okay, because <laughs> we didn't install ETS here, so uh, I'm not sure whether it will work or not. Okay, so it's like this, uh, right click, okay, right click, right click, open EGS model. Okay, these physics professors have done it all. Okay, they have, they know all the problems that school face, they made it. EGS is not found. Okay, so if you have EGS in stock, which is very easy, just go to the website and download it. Run it once and then forever you remember. Okay, what I want to share with you, just a short uh, sharing before I dismiss you, will be uh, a few months ago, uh, I have some professional interaction with uh, Dr. Chiu. Yeah. So Dr. Chiu uh, highlighted to me in a lesson, you want it to be effective, you need to address the macro level, micro level, symbolic level. So I use that and I try it out in classroom and it does help me a lot. And for today's session, uh, you can see that uh, for the macro level, uh, we can introduce a demonstration, probably for the collision of the car. You can do a demonstration, a real life demonstration to address the macro part. When you come to the micro part, the simulation will give you a very good uh, micro level. You can look at the, the graph to tell you exactly what happened at micro level. And the symbolic level will be all the numbers and the equations that actually helps the student to understand better uh, quantitatively. So uh, using applets, animation applets, it does help you. Okay, but you must work together with uh, uh, demonstration and all the other tools that you learn. Uh, if you want to depend solely on uh, 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 applets, I don't think uh, yeah, it will work perfectly because there is not a, you can't find a perfect simulation that, uh, that is uh, to the real life. I have uh, visited the Institute of uh, High Performance uh, uh, the co Computing, yeah, uh, IHTC. So what happened is, uh, to, to come up with a real life simulation, they need a few months for the computer to run continuously. So uh, this simulation will be good enough uh, for the student application. And in fact, uh, a lot of the industrial are using simulation because it saves costs and it saves lives. Why save costs? Um, if you're going to uh, 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 straight away produce a, a prototype, it's going to be very expensive. It will cost millions of dollars. So what they do in, um, uh, in the engineering world is they come out with simulation like animation applets. The engineer will go and test out all the variables, change the uh, size and the shape of the object. And with that, uh, they test it out to make sure that it works 90% uh, before they produce the prototype and test it out. And this is what's happening in the real world. And the students are going through what the engineer is going, engineers are going through, putting numbers, test it out. If it works, uh, they use it to, uh, understand the, to understand the concept better. All right, so they are doing three, uh, we are preparing them for the real world outside there, right, where we use sim simulation. Yeah. So this will be a good platform using a simulation and using applets. They will find a similarity, the connection to the real world outside. So I think uh, with this, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Chiu to give away the certificate of appreciation for our three presenter. feedback form. All right, I hope today's session has uh, raised many interesting questions and really uh, something for you to bring back to think about. And uh, I think it's the beginning of the journey. Uh, do continue to uh, network with uh, your physics colleague right? and we will, we will have to form this strong uh, network uh, learning community. It will help us to grow as a profession. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Yeah, thank you for your contributing uh, contribution during the journey. Because I realize a lot of questions are being asked and you should not stop here because of the time constraint, right? So please email as many questions as possible, not to me but to the three presenters. <laughs> and then they'll take out for you. And they'll provide you online coaching also. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So lunch time is from 12 to 1. Okay. So uh, enjoy your lunch, enjoy your networking. Okay. This is a training call. Well, this one, okay.
because we have some slides that were not done at one point with you actually. So uh, just to end up with this slide, uh, you can actually look at this thing called Angular Studio today. Uh, it's the same group of people, Jimmy, uh, Angela Meister, and another guy called Damien from RJC, from uh, SRJC. So uh, this is funded by Anthony. Uh, it's a two-year research project. Uh, Okay, so I think because it's open source in nature, we believe the more, uh, the stronger we get as a team. <coughs> so we are conducting we will be mounting some workshops to teach teachers how to train the simulation on their own. Uh, but that workshop once we cut up, uh, we are inviting to, uh, Professor Wong to come down. He has a great line, it's a first. So I need to arrange the date for him to come down. So once that is set, I will, uh, yeah. So once that is, once that is set, I will send a mail through the Master Teacher Network. And yeah, hopefully, uh, or you, through that email, remember to give me your email, uh, then I can give it to you. Okay? And or informally, the worksheets uh, that was shared, uh, they are all in ICT connection, it looks like that. The simulations are in NTNU, you need to register. Uh, these are our blogs, and uh, we hope that you can visit it because we do share our thoughts, our simulations inside uh, the blogs. Uh, it's an easier way to share than to always email with people than to just uh, forget. Thank you so much. Maybe you should thank them for sharing with us.